Sliced Bread. And welcome to the Sliced Bread Podcast, where we give you your daily slice of life. I am your host, Gary. And on today's panel, we got our boy, Lenny. The local boy. Nice. We got Chris. I'm Chris, and I love the crust. Lovely, lovely. And last, but certainly not least, we got the boy, Bob. Not the boulder, where we don't build things up, we break them down. And today we're going to break down and break bread today's topic. And yes, so we're going to talk about the vasty experience. So I want to put you guys in a bit of a situation where you're either talking to an old friend or a work colleague and you guys talk about varsity. And in that conversation, two things will either happen. We'll talk about how varsity was the best years of your life or varsity was so-called the worst years of your life. So I want to talk to Bob. Bob, what was your varsity experience? That was classic, <laughs> but we we talking um, of a particular time period where you were young, mm. and therefore you had the world as your oyster. So you everything was a possibility on adversity, if you know what I mean. So how you experience it will determine whether it was good or bad. I would say for my varsity experience, it was pretty decent. There were parties, there was academics, there was socializing, meeting different people's work, walks of life. So I would say it's pretty good. Nice. Uh, Lenny, how was yours? Pretty good too. Um, I don't remember much of it because it's a, just the memories that I don't really want to bring back. Gee. But um, I think it was decent. I don't remember much of studying or much of going to class. Mm. But everything else that happens besides going to class was quite good. Okay, nice. And Chris, how was your varsity experience? My varsity experience was uh, very good. I would say that it happened very quickly, though. I would say the years go by very fast. And I would say I made a lot of good friends and had some decent memories. Wasn't the greatest time, wasn't the worst time. It was okay. Okay, that's nice, man. My experience was slap bang in the middle. It was good and it was bad. That's all I can say. It was good for, you know... the meeting up with new friends it was bad because of academics but still <laughs> <laughs> don't make your yeah. problems ours <laughs> <laughs> anyhow guys bringing all about all, all this together I want to take you guys back when you were like a young man and also woman to our listeners when you were 18 years old when you got the opportunity to go to university in your head were you thinking of going for education or were you thinking of going for a degree so yeah what do you what do you mean by that education and degree when it comes to education, you go in for the experience, you want to learn exactly what you're going through and so forth. Or when it comes to degree, you're just going for a piece of paper so you can get a job. You know, and give a bit of an insight on what you feel on this. Um, if we're going to look at education, that is the higher learning of something you're already interested in. Uh, when you say you're getting a degree, let's be honest, most people are getting a degree because... Our external influences, let's use your parents for instance, they want you to be the lawyer, they want you to be the doctor, but let's say you're a creative individual, but to appease the external pressure, you will go into a field that you don't particularly like, but you will do it just so that there's a level of security that your parents think you'll achieve as time goes on. So that's what really the difference of an education is you're actually in the field you actually want to be in, so it will elevate your understanding of what you want to do come the end of the year or the next few years per se. So that's the difference between the two or how I understood what you meant. Mm. And Chris, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I happen to have read a quote the other day from Mark Twain, which I just so happened to remember today. It said that uh, I never let my schooling interfere with my education. And uh, the quote hit me quite hard because I was wondering what Mark Twain actually meant by that when he was saying he doesn't let his schooling interfere with his education. And I, I did some further research into Mark Twain and I realized that he was very critical about the education system. And what I, what I learned though is that he was basically saying like you were talking about a degree and education and it's like I would think that what you learn on the streets for example and your experiences in life doesn't necessarily correlate with perhaps getting a, a degree or a piece of paper certificate at university. And that, yes, it can be beneficial, of course, if you want to fit into society, but does it really mold you as a person? You know, that's what I was thinking. So you're saying like you have to have a bit of a street smart and book smart? Yeah, I, was, I think it's more a case of like how much does the degree really matter? If, you, if you're not really going to use it to its benefit, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. I think what you, 
what you kind of mean is that there's a ton of people that have degrees out there, but they're not necessarily the smartest people per se. Exactly, yeah. And it does turn out that way. Yeah, and it's also like when Mr. Carrier was asking us about the difference between a degree and education. Mm. And I was like thinking like, yeah, what, what, what do you actually go for? I think most people probably go for a degree because you need to get like employment and all those things. Well, actually, Chris, I would argue this in the sense that it's more, not street smarts versus book smarts, but more practical versus theory in a conceptual, philosophical way. Is yeah. that someone that will have the theoretical knowledge will not be able to um, apply it in real life. So let's take something as negotiating. You can read all the books in the world, but if you can't actually sit there across someone and negotiate, which is the practical side of your theory, then have you really learned anything? So that's the mm. problem with the degree and the education, because the education to me would be the practical. Can you take the theory and yes. apply it? Yes. Yeah. That's the education to me. And the theory will just be, um, I can tell you now, oh, um, how do you get the girl? Mm. Now yes. go try it. It's very it's different. So, I actually had an interesting um, thing that one of my lecturers used to say. He used to say, and this guy was one of the most interesting guys I've ever met. He used to say, when you are in a certain position for X amount of years with an expected outcome, when you've reached that outcome, what have you actually mastered? So again, are you putting to practice all those things that you've learned or have you just gotten to that place because that's a natural course? You've gone through the motions to yeah. get a degree and now you've got the degree, but have you actually mastered what you've been taught and what you were supposed to learn? For someone that didn't go to class, you knew very well. A lecture. <laughs> I did okay. I did okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that's a result of just going for a degree. I'm not mistaken, I'm Lenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't end up mastering anything. Okay. Just go for that nice piece of paper. And Bob, what's your? I would say, uh, at least from a um, mental health space, it's mm. long term, it's not the right decision because if you pursuing something that you don't particularly want to do after a while, it definitely becomes mundane to you. You're not pursuing this out of passion. You're not pursuing this with the motivation of going further. Therefore, long term wise, I would not suggest this because you will eventually deteriorate. You will remain stagnant and no one wants to remain stagnant because once that happens, then you become unhappy. You will remain content and you just don't want to, let's say, wake up in the morning and go do the same thing over and over and over because you're not chasing something because once you chase something and you get rewarded for chasing it and you keep chasing it and you get more reward there's always a a run in motion they always say uh things in motion tend to stay in motion so you say we must build up more goals for yourself in the work it's work, field. work it's when i mean by the degree it's like there's points where there's no more elevation yeah and once that occurs you either need to switch directions or you need to change something because if you stay in the same spot, eesh, tough for you. Sorry, yes, Lenny, what do you want to say now? It's got a lot to do with personal interest. I would say that, yes, from a human element. Yeah. 100%. Because if you're interested in people, then you have to switch the people around you. Mm. If yeah. you're interested in things, then you have to change the things that interest you. Because naturally, you spend more time on things that you are interested in. Absolutely. And your if you think about it, you have a job, but you have more fun or more energy on a podcast. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like, I get it. This is more passionate because this is something that uh, resonates to you more. So therefore, it will bring you more happiness and long-term success. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah, nice. Sure. Chris? Look, I understand what Bob, not the builder, means. But I would, I would slightly disagree and say that I feel like a degree can always be a good thing. Because, I mean, it opens up doors for you regardless of whether you're going to go into that specific field or not. I mean, you look at what young people are doing these days going overseas to teach English and all these things. And a lot of these things require degrees, regardless of what your degree is in. Yeah. So, I mean, you can and also, if you apply for a job in any way, having a degree can only help you. But like Bob was saying, on the other side is that you can be wasting a lot of time also on a degree. So I would say if you are going to do it, which I'm 100% I'm not against, I'm fully against anyone who wants to go for a degree, but bearing in mind what Bob has said, I would say that go for the education aspect. Go because you want to enrich yourself with the content 
and the education and not simply because you want to put the stamp behind your name. Yeah. You know what, Chris, let me rebuttal that quickly. Um, I understand what you're saying for the degree for long-term security purposes because that yeah. is very important. Don't ever get that part twisted. Whatever choice you make, the whole point, whether you're male or female, is that long-term um, security and provisioning to have a successful life is important. So therefore, the education route makes sense. But what I'm also saying is, especially in this climate, within this world climate, you don't really need a degree to be successful. Mm. You do not. Like podcasts. No, definitely not. I mean, no, you really don't. No, yeah, well, yeah thank many. you for that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, there are avenues you can no. take other than yeah. that. And route. there's many successful people that have dropped out of university yeah, and exactly. college. Yeah. You, like I said, if you took, let's look at the brain, the analytical and the creatives. The creatives, you don't really need a degree to tell me whether you're an artist or not. Mm-hmm. You literally yeah, agree. don't. Agree. Mm-hmm. So you, if you're a painter, I don't need to see a piece of paper. I need to see your painting. So yeah. that, that's interesting, True. the whole painting thing, because there's a, there's a, there's a college in, in town that I went to once, and it was a mosaic art. Mm-mm. And they were all there getting a qualification for the mosaic art, you know. And it's the people who are doing insane, brilliant work and stuff like that. Look, in those ways, in those particular um, aspects, I think it's more mentorship to mentee. Like, mm. even if you take welding or even car engineering, the experience of the old mechanic must be passed down to the new mechanic. Even if you... The thing is, we do want the qualifications, though. That is something that, as a consumer, you would like your mechanic to show me that you know what you're doing because how many backyard mechanics do you know mm. that can get the job done but can't stamp like, oh, I did your service. Because you're just not qualified in that range. So that's why you must get your paperwork in order but do it with the right outcome in mind. I have an interesting question for, for everyone. So if you go to a, just actually out of interest, if you go to a doctor and the doctor literally shows you his average was like 55%, which means he passed. And you go to another doctor and his average was like 88%. They both passed. Like, would that have an impact on how you perceive the medical attention that you're getting from, like, X and Y doctor, for example? The doctor do 55% good on my body. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. that is an interesting point because, I mean, look, 55% is a pass. I know that all too well. But um, <laughs> at the same time, doctor's a doctor. And again, it's... Yeah. The work that doctors do is not on paper. It's physical work that they have to do with mm. it. I mean, the only work that they do on paper is probably not even legible. But <laughs> they have to perform on you. They have to prescribe the proper things. And that's when the theory comes in place, what they need to master. In terms of exams, they've got theory side, but they've got practical also. Yeah. Now, if he's getting like a low mark on the practical side, I'm pretty sure the institution where every studying at wouldn't feel com- comfortable passing him if he's not... Yeah, that's enough. also wanted to say with service industry, Lenny, it's like, um, even though you would never know if you got 55 or 80%, he exactly, or she, yeah. Yeah. first and foremost, you wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. But there are such um, barriers for people to enter and almost like if you had to go through six boards or like just to mm-hmm. in at the end goal you'll be fine at the end goal because yeah. you, you would have gone through so many different training aspects mm. so even if it was 55 percent, it's better than zero percent yeah. yeah and also people choose different routes and take different times to get to the same point exactly anyway. yeah yeah. Mm. yeah look how long it takes for lawyers to end up being there no even if you take it back to the medical look at the sangoma there are people that will truly yes. trust the Sangoma to heal certain things of them. And there's no paperwork. And there's no paperwork at all. But yeah. the work gets done nonetheless. Okay, guys. You guys brought a lot of good points. But now we're going to talk and about... And how we ended up with Sangoma. <laughs> exactly. Sangoma. So I'm like, okay. But anyhow, let's talk about the social networking. You know, the networking at your universities, at your colleges and stuff. How important is that? So I want to ask Chris, how was your networking skills at Varsity? In terms of... Uh, Job and wise, I don't really have any sort of connections at the moment, if I have to be honest. But I would say it is a good place to network. There's many people, I'm sure, that have made lifelong friends and business partners at Varsity. From my side, all I can say is that I've made one or two good friends. And yeah, that was about it for me. But I do see the benefit in networking at Varsity. I mean, if you look at extremely successful people like Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, for example, mm-hmm. he started his company in his dorm room with... with fellow 
students of his. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're still going strong today. So there's definitely proof that networking and varsity can work to your advantage, I feel. So Bob, yeah. I'm going to take a play out of your book. Instead of breaking things down, were you building up social media, like social people? No. Lies <laughs> 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 and propaganda, guys. Okay? <laughs> um, yes, I've met too many people, too many people on Varsity that you run into work sometimes that you like, wow, <laughs> so you handling the, bo- the books here. Okay, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to the like company. I didn't see uh, what happened on Wednesday or Thursday night, but it is what it is. And the boss man knew it. Be. Yeah, they don't know. <laughs> All they know is it's the professional and I respect the professional. <laughs> but what I was going to say was with the networking per se is that You'll meet many different people from many different faculties. So therefore, uh, you could meet your pastor at Varsity. True. If you go to the theology side, you could meet the next politician if you met if you at the BA side, the social politics. So you could literally meet different engineers that one day if you want to now, let's say, build on your house. Hey, I remember this guy. Exactly. Where did he work? Yeah. Da, 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 da. But there's a lot of people that go to Varsity, honestly. To get their degree and get out. Yeah, they don't true. even uh, true. converse in the socializing aspect of things. It actually gets forced upon you sometimes. Mm. It's like there's more introverts on Varsity now, but that's another story. We don't talk about it. <laughs> when you say about like forced, you know, you're talking like when they partake into those, um, you know, those rituals. Look, if you think about martyrs. it on Varsity, there's always been social experiments. There's always been oh, okay. a, uh, this um, get-together, that gathering. Student nights. Student nights, all this sort of stuff. But there are yeah. literal people that will just not take part of it because they don't want to socialize. Mm. Okay, cool. Do you think? That makes me think of all the, the social settings that happen in varsity once you are there. I mean, you've got, if you live on res, you've got initiation, but there's all these student activities taking place to make all you more time. sociable. That's actually quite interesting to think because they're setting you up to actually network, make certain yes. connections that could yeah. last for much longer. And then who knows, maybe X amount of years, a connection actually helps you get a job. Yes. A connection makes your transition into a job a lot easier. And my thing is, uh, that's putting the best foot forward. Because if you just take the time to participate, you don't even know what your long-term outcomes will be. Mm-hmm. It could be mm-hmm. very beneficial. But if you don't take that first step that you're doing yourself a disservice. Yes. And yeah. um, speaking linear of that, social circles that you spoke about and the, the programs that students can participate in, yeah. that also helps you to build yourself up, like your, your character or whatever. Like they say, open up. <laughs> yes, yes. But I mean, a lot of political leaders, if yeah. you look at their histories, a lot of them were already SRC um, leaders. A lot of them participated in different societies yeah. and they were the leaders of those societies. So you mm-hmm. wonder why they're so well equipped now. It's because Varsity actually gave them the platform to help them grow themselves yeah. And to learn skills. Training happens. And learn to age. lie, but okay. True, true. <laughs> Inherently. My word, my word, but my you know word. What, the, what, the, what do you call it? The RAC or whatever? It's they've been lying. They've been lying to us yeah. the whole time, man. <laughs> and when you get into politics, it's the same thing. They just become, it's like they become better and better at it, you say. Yeah. We're going to cut that part out. <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> I will not be censored. <laughs> but anyhow... We also got to talk about those student nights, like you mentioned now, Lenny. You know, those student nights, we have to budget. I, I know certain universities, I have like a Tuesday drink night at like certain clubs and so forth. So can you guys like sort of remember certain student nights or do you want to actually talk about those student nights <laughs> per se? I mean, of what you do remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do remember having to make a particular decision quite a few times as whether I stay in and study for my exam tomorrow Mm -hmm. if I go out with Kelly on student night. I mean, student night had so many promises of so many things. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be the best night. You're going to meet these people and everything's just going to be cool. Um, But reality comes in the morning where I've now studied absolutely nothing Mm -hmm. and I'm not prepared for my exam. But at the same time, is it worth it? Yes? No? I can say for my part, there was a module called stats, right? And I sucked at it. But when it came to party nights, the probability in my head was always flying. I said, the probability I'm going to get drunk tonight, the probability I'm either going to get rejected tonight, or the probability I'm getting home tonight. But anyhow, so um, Chris, what's your um, stories? Actually, I would say that, interestingly enough, 
um, the institution I attended, I didn't attend too many of it, but I did attend uh, varsity student nights of, of friends of mine, um, rather. And I mean, it's, it just shows, I mean, suppose different varsities offer different experiences. So I would say, no, it was fun. I mean, I wasn't, a, I didn't stay on res, so I couldn't get that full experience. But where I could, I, I tried to enjoy myself. And uh, yeah, that was it, basically. If I can add, um, if you can compare your institution and your friends' institutions, um, like for us experience, like what's the, the pros and cons for those? I would say theirs was better because, you know, you get this thing around the world where you have um, uh, university towns. Yes. So he attended one with the uni that was a university town. And I think that made it more sort of enclosed community, varsity life. And you can sort of walk to, to all the, the, the disco places, walk back to your res. Um, so I think that, that aspect made it a bit better. Okay, yes. nice. Bob? Been, been a while since I've been at a disco. Yeah, no, i never heard of discos. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of bars, I've heard of clubs. clubs. <laughs> <laughs> but a disco, hey, boogie boogie. For, for, for the universal international audience. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Nice. Okay. When we said Sangoma, that didn't happen. <laughs> But all right, we're here now. <laughs> we're out here <laughs> doing our thing. And to add, um, Bob, please, look, man. Bobby was doing Bobby things on those student always. nights. All right. Breaking and people down. down yes. Let's just so say, Breaking people down. Um, hearts were broken. Uh, drinks were flowing. And uh, fun memories were made. That's all I can say. Nothing more. We'll um, I have the right to an attorney. And uh, whatever <laughs> was done back in the day has been done back in the day. I cannot be held liable now as my disclosure. I will say, how crazy was it that for these student nights, right? So we were all students at Once Upon a Time and many of our listeners were students as well. How crazy was it that they actually made us pay entrance fees and then still having to go in there and buy drinks? Yeah. And you were students living on a budget. No one has money except for... The, the funny the thing people. is that, I'm um, sorry, Bob, to cut you there. The funny thing about nobody has money, you look back and you're wondering now, where the heck did you even get the money from to do all those things? You get to hustle, dude. That's the thing. You get to hustle. Or you get to ask like your parents and stuff like that. We were all trust fund babies. No, man. It was more like, um, this is literally where the community comes together. Oh, where you okay. each put in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And this is where the, the, the idea or the culture of pre-drinking started is definitely on college campuses. Yes. It's definitely yeah. at universities. That's yeah. true, yes. Where you pre-game and then you go to the place, you come in hot. <laughs> <laughs> you come in <laughs> hot, bro. <laughs> I feel so sorry for the bounces now. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> you you get paid for this. You have to deal with like 15 <laughs> drunk students yeah. coming all at once to the it, it was fun, man. That's what I'm saying because it was like, that's the thing with the university or any varsity experience is that there is somewhat of a bubble. There's a bubble that needs to get pop once you leave it. Mm. And some people still try to cling on to the bubble. Mm. You gotta grow up. Those things were fun, then mm. it can't be fun in your thirties. Mm. You gotta let it go. <laughs> <laughs> don't be that old man in the club. We don't or that <laughs> old lady in the club. No. <laughs> grow up. <laughs> what you doing in the club on a Thursday? Uh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> but, so, but life crisis. Anyhow, guys, let's wrap this thing up, man. It was vastly. The good years of your life, bad years of your life, yeah. Uh, now, like I said, I feel like getting a degree can be to your advantage. Just don't waste any time there. And I certainly wouldn't say that it's the best years of your life, but it can be some of the best years of your life. Mm. Yeah. Lenny? Definitely, it shouldn't be the best years of your life. There's just so many years that comes after varsity, and you don't want to peak early. <laughs> life is long. Agreed. <laughs> That's my thoughts. My thoughts is that it's a great experience, like varsity, but obviously it just it builds you up for the latter years of your life. So you shouldn't just stick onto those memories. And I'm going to say we lost. Bob? Um, don't listen to these guys, okay? You need to go to varsity and have absolute blast. You must have as much fun because that's when you're at your youth. You could drink and the next day you can do it again. Try that in your 30s. It's not going to happen. You need to do a weekend to recover from one day's drinking. Enjoy your time there. Have the most fun you can. If you have money, good for you. If you don't, start hustling. Make it happen. What a closing monologue. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm tuning next week for another slice of life. <laughs>